quickie stitchy tube and reveals. Hello, it's been a while. And it's not because I haven't been working or thinking about you guys, but it's been a while, a couple weeks. And I'm back again. Shady's back. Tell your friends. And I'm here to show what I've got for market. Almost all of what I've got for market. There's one that I'm going to hold back. That's just a little one that's not quite ready <clears throat> for show and tell yet. But hello, hello. Good to see you or not see you. <coughs> and we're in a flood watch right now. So it could, <clears throat> it could flood. But that's okay. We're actually on the high end of town. So my mom, I think, never remembers. So anytime she sees on the weather channel that the, you know, it's, oh, I hear you're flooding. If we flood, build an ark because we're on the high end of town. Uh, it's, I've been kind of unplugged from everybody for the last couple of weeks because I'm literally living, drinking, eating, sleeping needlework right now. And um, so when I've had to, you know, sit and work on models and things, I haven't really even been watching floss tube because it's like needlework overload. <laughs> and you, you're probably like, how can that happen? It can happen. It can happen to the best of us and the worst of us. So I'm, I don't know what's going on in the needlework community much. I have checked in to Instagram now and then, and I'm starting to kind of peek in to see what the other designers have got. There's always a lot of um, kind of added anxiety and I'm not competitive. I'm really not like I'm one of those people that like everybody wins. It's all good for everybody and you want other people to succeed. But I think there's that fear that like, okay, I'm getting all this stuff ready for market. What if mine is looks bad or what if I don't get done in time or what if, I don't know, you just kind of want to be like, cause it's kind of like preparing for a, a show. Um, and I used to do theater. But it's kind of like, you know, where it's like, are we ready? Are we ready? And you don't know and you hope you're ready. But there's always that fear that maybe you're not totally ready and that things are going to go awry. And the thing is, like when you go to Nashville, there's a couple hundred shops that are there to buy from you. And if you don't have your stuff together, it's not good. And, you know, also all the stitchers are kind of watching to see what you've got, too. So the pressure is kind of on and it's OK. It's a good kind of pressure. Um, I trained as a journalist and so I kind of trained to, uh, you know, kind of thrive in deadline situations, but it's still hard. It doesn't mean it's easy. It's still a lot of work. Not complaining, just telling you where I'm at. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm going to show you what I've got because that's why you're here. And then if you don't want to listen to me blather, you can just swipe on over to the next video. Um, I'm going to show them here and then I'll do reveals, I think, later today on Instagram too. I may put, I wonder if I could put stuff up on my site somehow. I don't know. I'll have to send a newsletter out. Maybe I'll do that next week. I've still got a to-do list that's, oh, and my ring is tight. I have a to-do list that's kind of long, but it's like super manageable. And some of the things are sort of optional. I need to go get a haircut. I haven't had my hair professionally cut for <laughs> why i'm sure that every time i go to aveda they're like you know does she like cheat on us with other salons no i cheat on you with myself when i cut my hair at midnight so anyway i've got five new things and one of the things that you worry about as a designer is like how many things should i have and I kind of get like panicky because you're like, you hear some designer say like, I have 10 new things. And you're like, oh, I don't have 10 things. Well, I'm a failure, I'm a failure. And you, you know, and so like the problem is as a, and I've gone many, many years as a shop, more, more years I went as a shop than I did as a designer. It's so many new things. And so I kind of feel like from a shop's perspective, if you go into someone's booth and they have, let's say, 10 new things, I mean, they, they all could be good and you may want them all. But I kind of feel like sometimes you pick and choose like, oh, these are, to me are the best five. You know what I mean? And you may kind of not get others that you might otherwise have gotten. There's kind of this sweet spot where you want everybody really to consider the new things you have and not have it be too much overload. Does that make sense? That's kind of how I see it. So I have five things and I feel like they're all of them good. All I'm proud of all five things, so that's good. So without further ado, um, this is, uh, I've, I'm re-releasing, not re-releasing, I'm releasing another in my series of antique. 
Um, you may have seen my antique locks and keys and my antique scissors and spools. Now I have antique cups and spoons, which is teacups and teaspoons. This was stitched by the lovely Jenny, also known as Long Dog Stitcher. She did a great job. I so appreciate her help, and she is going to continue helping me as a model stitcher. Um, here it is. It is on 36 count oaken and uh, by picture this plus and it's stitched in Gloriana. Oh, I don't remember the color. It's stitched in a Gloriana color that'll be on the back of the chart. But you definitely could stitch this on any count you like. They're kind of made to be like for scraps of fabric that you have and to use a color of thread that you really like. And so they're, they're silhouette pieces. I think it turned out really cute. I did add the teapot down here just because I thought you gotta have a teapot if you're gonna have teacups and teaspoons. This is antique lace that I bought on Etsy and I always try to finish these with a piece of antique lace stuffed with um, crushed, not crushed wallet shells, stuffed with sawdust and I just back with the same fabric. I kind of like the way that looks and it's what I've done with the others in the series. I, I, I plan on continuing to release these. I have other ideas um, for these kind of silhouettes but they're just kind of a fun quick kind of weekendy project. And that is only available as a chart, and the chart will retail for seven. I think that's what I've got the other ones at. Okay, so that's that one. That's one. The next is the next part of the um, Jenny Bean for the Parlor series. We're down getting near the bottom. We're down to number six out of eight. And um, the last one that I released was the verse. And so then this new one is um, called the Forest. And then the next one after that will be the town and then Jenny's home will be the last one. So we're at the forest right now and this is um, called the forest. And there it is right there. And this was stitched by the lovely Dory. And she also did a great job. And um, I hope she doesn't mind me saying she donated her stitching fee to the animal shelter. Which I thought was very, very sweet and very kind. Because this represented some good time for her. So that's that one. And this is, I don't know, if, can I stand far enough back for you to see what this is all looking like? Uh, -ba -doo. Okay, can you see? So that's where we're at. And I think it's looking really good. I love it. And I'm excited to get it finished up because this one has been a few years in the making and I'm sure people are getting super impatient with me. But you know what? You can't rush some things. Some things can't be rushed. So that's that piece. And that's um, this is stitched on 36 count Wren by Picture This Plus. And I have on here, it says Wood Hicks Grove. Um, Wood Hick is an old timey name for a, um, not wood chopper, lumberjack, <laughs> lumberjack. And so that's that. And there's a the little, there's a black swan there and some fishies in the creek and some, you know, animals kind of sprinkled throughout the trees. But, um, there it is. So that's that. Ta -da! Okay, next. Two biggies. Two biggies. The other one that I have left that you won't get to see is a smallie. Because I like to have a mix of smalls and bigs. Okay, so this one is called A Savior's Praise. I designed it last late last year. And the wonderful Chris Canaday stitched it for me. She has stitched two other big models for me. Um, she stitched the Jane Philpot sampler and um, a part of Ann Dale. She does a great job. She's very fast. She's so sweet and so nice. And um, I'm just so glad that she, she works for me. <laughs> she works for me. So this one, um, I think is really, I think it's really good. I really like it. If I was a shop, I would totally buy a lot of these. Um, I, I, when I stitch, I like for things to be discoveries. I like there to be lots of little motifs and things that maybe you didn't notice just by looking at the cover. Uh, I don't like borders that are a really repetitive, but a border is a very nice part of a sampler, I feel like. And so this one has got a lot going on. It's fun to look at. Chris said that it should be criminal how much fun she had stitching it. And she did a great job. So this one is called The Savior's Praise, and I'll kind of talk you through parts of it Again, this is big, so I don't, can I, do, 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 do. There, I don't have glass on this. So there it is. It's stitched mainly in anchor floss, and then there are some weak style works colors. And I stitched it, it is stitched on uh, 40 count something by r, r Reproductions. Flax, if you just have a piece of flax, that would make a good substitute. You probably could use natural linen too, um, or just something neutral that you've got. 
So um, let's see, let's just kind of zoom in on it. So uh, the, the top here, you've got oops, this urn here, and this is where all the vines are growing from. You can see the vines all come out of that urn. And then I, the way I designed this was I just started going and I was like, what else, what, what am I thinking of right now? So it's kind of a trip through Teresa's brain of what she was thinking of when she designed the sampler. And so the border has lots of little surprises. No section of the border is the same. There's no repetition. There may be motifs like the bees I kind of sprinkled throughout just because I thought they were really cute. But uh, I, I added words like patience and peace. And over here, you've got faith and joy and hope and humility, kindness, piety, resourcefulness, right judgment, honesty, patience, patience here, and lots of motifs. See, like you see the little scissors and the little spool and here's a little pea pot and oh, here's a ship with some fish and an anchor. And so there's just lots of things to see. The alphabet, I had Chris just stitch in cross stitch here, but you could stitch it in eyelets and it would be really, really pretty. And then, is this, is the light good enough? I feel like it's so dim outside today, it's so dim. Uh, so this is a song, I kind of sing this <laughs> around the house sometimes. It's, it's an old church song that we used to sing. Uh, now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices. And um, I don't know, I think it's a really nice song. And there's like a little heart and hand, and here's a little lady with a little animal. And then there's, uh, oop, over here, you've got people's initials that I just made up initials. And so you could put initials of people that you love there. You've got a row of pine trees with cardinals sitting on top, but the white dove is on the tallest tree there. And a house with a doggy. And I love this little border. I might have to use that again sometime. And then this was a verse, I don't remember where I found it. It was a prayer or something that I found somewhere and I thought it was really nice. What words, what voices can we bring? Which way our accents raise to welcome thy mysterious king and sing a savior's praise, which I thought was a kind of, it could be kind of Christmassy, but it wouldn't have to be, you know. And I don't know why I put a bell there. <laughs> There's a little house down here. There's baskets, more scissors. I love the little wonky legged reindeer. You see those often on Pennsylvania German samplers. So that's that. I'm, I'm pretty proud of this one. I think it turned out really great. This basket here, I think would make a great pin cushion to just do the basket with the lady and finish it as a pin cushion. Emma Seabrook, the name here, it, and Crowsboro. Crowsboro was actually in England and Emma Seabrook, I don't know, I just made it up. I looked up like English surnames and I saw Seabrook and I kind of changed the spelling of it a little bit. And so she's just a made up person. In 1838, seems like a lot of samplers are stitched in 1838, at least the ones I have. And so that's it. Savior's Praise. It's spelled S-A-V-I-O-U-R apostrophe S praise. And I, I, I kind of hesitated. I was like, oh, is it going to be hard for people to find? You can find it. You'll find it. And I will note, too, when it's on the, on the chart, with countless gifts of love, countless, I, when I was designing it, I spelled it with one S. And then I went back and read through it, and I went, oh, I better correct that. And I went, you know what? Leave it, because girls made spelling mistakes on their samplers all the time. So if you wanted countless to have two S's, you really can just add another S and then just make the little zigzaggy line after that shorter. A Savior's Praise. Okay, the one you've all been waiting for. <laughs> the one <laughs> the one that made my eyeballs bleed. So, this is my Louisa Horsey reproduction sampler. I stitched it, the entirety of it. It has about 60,000 stitches in it, so it's big. And a lot of them are over one. Um, I'll put the original here so you can see it. This one has been years in the making, and this was my Kickstarter sampler, if any of you remember that story. So it has a lot of kind of feelings attached to it, and I'm super proud that it's done. I'm getting ready to ship them out to my Kickstarter folks um, who get it, you know, for free in exchange for them supporting the purchase of the sampler. And so I thank you if you were an original Kickstarter uh, patron, and thank you for your very, very long patience. I don't know, 50, almost four years. It's been a journey. It's been a journey, but I'm super proud of it. And I'll kind of um, talk about 
the elements of this too as I hold it up. I'm gonna have to step back, I think. I feel like I have to step back. Bum, 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 bum. What do you think? It looks good, it's big. Like I should almost put it this way so you can get like a big close up, close up. Um, it turned out super great. It turned out super great. And I really, really like it. It's a labor of love for sure. Um, and I kind of marvel because um, Louisa was either 12 or 13 when she stitched the sampler. And the fabric she stitched hers on was an uneven weave, which means her stitches were, sh the, you know, instead of being a square, they were short rectangles. And so her sampler is actually proportionally much shorter than this one. So mine looks very elongated um, compared to hers. Um, I learned a lot of things about Louisa, but I learned some things about stitching too doing this one. And so it was really a great project. It was a great project to work on. I always enjoy kind of getting to know the girls while I'm working on these projects. I guess I'll just mention that, you know, when I reproduce samplers, there are a number of different ways you can do it. And any person, any designer that reproduces a sampler, everybody's got their own style of reproduction. So you could take the same old sampler and give it to 10 different sampler reproduce people, reproducer people, and they would look like they would have 10 different looks to them. I like to go with colors that look old, faded brown, olive, yellowish, kind of like they look now, kind of grungy, gritty. But I like to have elements be distinctive. So sometimes if you would reproduce a sampler really, really exactly like it is now, you lose some elements of it. For example, um, the central urn here, uh, Henry was her brother, and so he was the third born, and he was just three months old or so when he passed away. Um, you can barely see his name and the date, and you almost cannot see this angel that is stitched over one in there. And I didn't even realize it was there until I was reproducing it, because you almost can't see it. And so for me to reproduce it the way it is, you would, you would have missed that and you wouldn't really have been able to read his name. I had to use like magnification and really bright light to try to parse out the way that, you know, she had filled in the urn. Um, so that's, that's kind of my style of reproduction. You kind of tweak it a little bit so that the sampler makes sense when you're looking at it visually. I absolutely love this top part with the urn and the leaves around it. I just knocks my socks off. And there were lots of little surprises in here too. She's got bugs. She's got a number of over one elements and I've had to make extra pages in the chart to just make sure that everybody really can see those. They are stitched in white, some of them. So you can, you know, they are harder to see, but you could definitely make them tan or something if you wanted to. Um, so when I stitched the sampler, I stitched the border first and I was like, praise the Lord, <laughs> the border meets. It meets all the way around and the border is great. And so, cause it's always like a heart palpitation moment. Is this gonna, is it gonna work? And then I went to the bottom and I stitched what I consider to be like the most fun part next. I couldn't wait for my dessert. And you gotta love this little Lord and Lady Shepherd with their crooks and their cute clothing and the little sheepy and there's a little squirrel and a little dog and a tree full of birds and acorns. And the grass, I love stitching that grass, like a big chunk of stripy grass. That's super fun. And then we got little naked um, angels <laughs> and there's Louisa's name, Louisa Horsey, December 21st, AD 1836. And so that, that's what I stitched next. And then I went, worked upwards and I did the On the Death of an Infant and stitched that first. And it's 10 lines, so it's quite a bit of over one stitching. And you kind of get to know the alphabet after a while. There are mistakes in there and I leave the mistakes. So if she misformed a letter, I left it misformed and you could correct it if you wanted to for sure. And then I kept working my way up and I did the, these little angels, which I think are super cute. And I did this row, which I think is a very pretty band. And then I worked up and I, I filled in this and I went down and I did the children of Robert and Martha Horsey. Now here's where I learned something. She used vertical and horizontal stitches to help fit things in. 
So uh, uh, cross stitches, vertical and horizontal cross stitches. So a vertical cross stitch means it's one thread wide, but two threads tall. And so that way she could fit more letters in a more compact space, which I thought was pretty genius. And then the line below that ziggity zaggity line is horizontal cross stitches. So those are one thread tall, but two threads wide. Um, and I had never, I don't think I had ever done those before. And actually they were really fun. And I think I would totally like to try that again. Um, she had these really great little Quaker stars that she filled kind of um, like church windows, like stained glass windows. But um, the sampler itself is very dark, dingy, dirty, stained, rusty, brown <laughs> looking. And so really looking closely, you can see that she used colors in there. And it was kind of a smorgasbord of, of colors in those stars. And I really, that, those were fun to stitch. And I think they turned out really, really cool. Um, one of the interesting things about the sampler is when I, after I got it and opened it up to reproduce it, I got a really big whiff of cigar smoke or like pipe tobacco, pipe smoke. And I almost wonder if her father or whoever maybe hung the sampler, if there was a lot of pipe smoking going on. Cause I really, it was, the smell was very strong and it dissipated and now I, I can't smell it anymore, but it was really kind of neat. Okay. So then let me tell you, cause this was kind of a stitching adventure. So then I was going to start the names. So I count, I knew it was going to be, you know, down from the H, so many stitches. And so I counted down. And what I did is it should have been, the lines should have started under this H and I started them under this H. So the, the names I started stitching 22 stitches too far that way. And I didn't realize it until I went to stitch this bird motif in. And I was like, that's not going to fit because this bird motif was kind of surrounded by animals like this one is. And I was like, what in the world? What am I, why can't I? And then it was like, I had this moment. And then you know how like you get hot and your skin tingles and you're like, oh no, like something, this is terrible. <laughs> and I already had four of the lines put in and they're over one on 40 count. So they take a while, but it takes longer to pick them out than it does to put them in because they're tight and they're tiny and they're, you know, the threads all get, you know, together. They're very tight and tiny. So I spent a good probably 30 minutes just picking out the name William. And, and it left the fabric looking like slightly fuzzy. And I was like, okay, here's the deal. If I try to take all of these out, not only is it going to take an ungodly amount of time, it's going to possibly make the fabric look tough. It's going to look fuzzy and worn. And while I'm all about fuzzy and worn, I, it was not the look I was going for with this. So then I was like, okay, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And I started talking to anybody here at home that would listen, including I think the cats. And I took it to Instagram and said, okay, here's my dilemma. I'm thinking I may leave it and just work it in. And everybody said, do that, you know, wabi-sabi, which means, you know, it's okay to be wonky. There's, there's beauty in imperfection. So I ended up adding Stitched by Teresa Vanette 2019 on there, which I've, I don't think I've ever done on a reproduction. And I kind of like that my name is on there with hers because I feel like we're sisters now in a way. Uh, because we are the only two people so far who have stitched the sampler this way. And I really thought about her little family. I do, I've, I really feel connected with Louisa on this one. So I left it and I squeezed things in as I could. And that's exactly what um, American sampler stitchers would have done. Betty Ring um, in one of her books talks about how you can sometimes tell a British sampler from an, um, an American one in that um, British teachers made their students pick things out and they wanted perfection. And American teachers were like, leave it in, <laughs> leave it in. So I'm American. And so that's, I guess, my own little spin on it. Now, the chart does not have my mistake. The chart is charted so that you can stitch it just like she did. And if you choose to make little deviations on your own, I think that's really cool. But that's, so that's, <laughs> that was just such a, uh, so anyway, uh, I love this little band here. And then I worked my way up and this, this was actually the last section I worked in. The flowers here, 
these little flowers here and here were super hard to stitch or they were super hard to design because I can tell that she probably used several colors to make the petals more distinct, but it's a complete, I looked with a magnifying glass. I put bright light on it. I had my magnifiers on. I could not see a difference in the threads and her petals were formed in such a way that I think she stitched each petal at a time. And because her tension was a girl's, you know, learning tension, you could see distinctions between each petal because she's still learning how to make her stitches lie nicely. And when, as an adult that stitches a lot, I don't have that, you know, and there's really no way to chart that. So I just, it's, they're over one, but they're blobby looking just like hers look right now. Hers look blobby looking, so these look blobby looking, and the, those are over one as well. This sampler is not super suitable for um, Ada, unfortunately. Um, I think you could, you probably could do it. You probably could, but it, there's so much over one um, that it really would be tricky. And then you've got those, you know, horizontal and vertical cross stitches too. Um, there she is. She's done. She's done. She's done. She's done. And so I'm working on printing those charts now and getting them packed. Um, all four of those charts, as, long, as well as this other one, will be available at market. None of them are limited editions. Um, I, some limited editions at market are one of those things. And, and in this latest needlework retailer, which is a magazine for designers and, and shops, they had a couple pages of people who had limited edition designs, you know, or market exclusives. And there's always just like the, do I do it? Do I not do it? Because if you do it, if you do a market exclusive, you know, either a kit or a chart, you run the risk of running out. And if you run out before all the shops have had their chance to get one, people are angry because they want, they came to market and now you don't have the market exclusive for them. And most designers get around that by saying, you know, we'll just ship it when we get back home. But then there's just kind of the, you know, okay, I got to go home. I got to print more, pack more and, and take care of getting it all shipped out. So then it's like, okay, then I'm going to print or, you know, make if you're doing kits, way too many so that I know that I won't run out. And then you're stuck with all this product that you have, you know, nowhere to go. And it's expensive to put kits together. It's a lot of work and it's, it's really not, I don't enjoy making kits. And I think, you know, you run into problems where people misplace the charm or they stitched it on a different count of fabric and now they've run out of thread and they're wondering if you have more that you can send. And so really it just, it's a long, it's a long process to put a kit together. So I just have decided not to do that and not to have an exclusive. I am only taking a certain number to market. I feel like I'll have enough for all the shops to get them. And then after that, they'll be available through my distributors, Yarn Tree and Hoffman Distributing. So those are my releases. Ta-da! <laughs> Ta-da! I have one other reproduction that is with a model stitcher right now. And she's not going to, she didn't get it done in time. And I didn't figure that she would. She's doing a great job. Her name is Laura. And that'll be nice because it'll be a reproduction that'll be ready, um, you know, in April maybe. And so it'll give you guys something to look forward to when really a lot of the designers are just spent aftermarket and aren't really releasing anything. I also am working on um, the sampler for um, the country, uh, the country sampler. And she's got that club and I'll put a link here down here below so you can get there and it's going to be there's there's four designers involved and it's exclusive uh charts for over a year and i'm the she asked me to be the first one so i'm i'm trying to get this other um sampler done in time for that okay so that's what i've been working on ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. um i have like questions that people have been asking um i'm just gonna grab a few i keep them on a, on a board here so um joan k uh, ask, do you edit your videos? It seems like one take. It's usually one take. I don't, I don't do a lot of editing on my videos. Uh, sometimes if I feel like I've left out a piece of information or I've misspoken, I'll put somewhere on the screen the correction. I uh, am trained also in public speaking. I started doing public speaking when I was in second grade. And I, I don't know, I guess the, the gal who did the church, like liturgical planning, picked me possibly at random to do readings at church. 
And I did uh, I did a uh, talent show in second grade too, and I won first place. I did a comedy. I did a comedy routine. I'll tell you one of my jokes for my comedy routine. Okay, so there's this farm, and on the farm lives a big mouth frog. And he goes up to Mrs. Cow and he says, Mrs. Cow, how do you feed your babies? And Mrs. Cow says, I, I feed my babies milk. And the big mouth frog was like, okay. And then he goes to Mrs. Pig and he says, Mrs. Pig, what do you feed your babies? And Mrs. Pig says, I feed them milk. And, and the big mouth frog is like, okay. And then the big mouth frog goes over to um, Mrs. Crocodile and he says, Mrs. Crocodile, how do you feed your babies? And Mrs. Crocodile says, I feed them big mouth frogs. And the big mouth frog goes, oh, really? <laughs> so that, was, that was one of my jokes. That was one of my jokes. I won first prize and I think $8 if I remember correctly. And I have a blue ribbon here somewhere. Um, and then, so I just, I continued to do readings. I was in other talent shows. Um, I took theater classes. I was in speech and debate throughout high school and then again in college. And so it's just, it's easy for me. It's easy for me to do public speaking. I, I The most I've ever spoken in front of, I think, was 10,000 people. I gave the commencement address at my um, college graduation. And so it is one take. They're never perfect, but it's it's one take and it's what I do. Thanks for that question. Um, okay, let's see. Eli, Eli, Elisa, Elisa R. says her daughter wants to know... Why are there so many alphabets on samplers? That's a very good question. It's, they're kind of, there's, there's always an alphabet on a sampler, right? And it's, samplers were used not only as practice and needlework for these girls, and, um, but they were also used to help them prepare to mark the household linens often. So if you had bed sheets and pillowcases and things like that they were very expensive because they took a long time to make they didn't have you know a manufacturing process like we do these days and so if they were to send them out to get washed they made sure that their family you know initials or numbers or things were on the linens so that they would make sure to get theirs back and so a lot of times if you buy antique linens like on you know if you find them on ebay or in, in a in an antique store they will have letters and and or numbers on them. And so they were practicing, practicing their letters and numbers. Now they're good practice, obviously, also if you're learning to write, and they're good practice, obviously, if you're learning how to stitch because a letter, you know, you have to get it shaped together in the right way, otherwise it doesn't look like what it's supposed to look like. Sometimes on a sampler, you'll see letters that are backwards. Sometimes they will miss a letter. Um, sometimes they will m misform a letter. And, uh, and I think after a while then, the whole idea of putting letters on a sampler just got to be the, you know, that's just what you do. It's just part of, it's just part of a sampler. And so that's why, that's why you do see alphabets on samplers. Um, do I have any others? Here's um, Jilly Pepper asked, uh, are torties and calicos cats always female? I think I've talked about um, torties and calicos before. A torty is a, a cat that is orange, white, and black. Uh, uh, and so is a calico, but a torty, those colors are kind of mixed and heathery, kind of shaggy looking. And a calico, they're going to be big spots. So genetically, I know my friend Jennifer has described this to me, why this is so. I don't understand, so I'm not going to try to explain it to you. But genetically, it's they are almost always female. So three out of 10,000 calico cats are male, and the rest will be female. That's the average. We actually fostered a, um, a calico. I don't know if I have a picture of him. His name, so we named him Uno. I brought him home and they said, okay, this is a girl and this is a boy and this is a girl, whatever. They thought that he was a girl because calicos are always girls. I mean, they're almost always girls. And so I brought him home and he was scampering around or whatever. And I was kind of looking at his butt and I was like, those look like not girl parts. And I sent a picture to one of the vet techs and I said, this is a boy. And she goes, oh my gosh. And so it was crazy because it almost just never happens. Like I'll probably never see another male calico. And so I kept him longer because sometimes they can have both female and male parts. And the vet wanted to make sure to fix him both ways. And it turned out that he did not have any female parts. He was all male. And so he was adopted out, 
um, to the highest bidder. And I think this, the show, I think somebody bid a thousand dollars for him. Now he was fixed, so he couldn't have make babies. And then they used that money to sponsor a cat adoption event, and they cleaned out but the cat cottage and the kitten cottage all got adopted under the um, you know umbrella of the money that he raised on his own. So that was really really cool, and he was a really sweet little guy. So yes, they almost are always female, but not always always. Um, oh, this is actually a good one to do today. This is um, this is uh, Claire H asked for tips for stitching on forty count. <laughs> And I don't know if I've talked about this for, before. It's possible. I stitch a lot on 40 count. I love the way one strand of thread looks on it, whether it's silk or cotton. And I use a size 28 needle is what works best for me. Graham just last night was helping me pack orders and he said, what's the difference between like a 26 needle and a 28? So he's learning, he's learning all that good stuff. And so I use a, a size 28 needle, which is a little bit thinner, a tapestry needle. I sell them on my site, but you can find them lots of places. Bowen is my favorite, but um, Mary Arden makes some good ones and you can get other good needles too. Um, so a, a, you're gonna need a smaller needle so you don't poke too big a holes in your fabric. One strand seems to work best. If you try two, you're gonna find it gets pretty bunchy. It's not that you can't do it, it's just that it's gonna give it more of kind of like a needle pointy canvasy kind of look. And you're probably gonna shag up your, you know, linen where, or your fibers where they're gonna get kind of shaggier looking. Uh, you need a pair of these probably if you, if you don't have young eyeballs anymore. 10 years ago, I didn't have to use these. I could just see 40 count and I cannot anymore. I have to use these even for like a 30 count. I have to use this. I can't read anymore without my glasses. I can no longer clip my fingernails <laughs> without glasses, but my far vision is 20-20. Uh, light helps a lot. So if you've got a good light over your shoulder or if you don't have a light, if you can work in front of a sunny window, um, Sunday morning is a great time for me to sit at the kitchen table that I have big windows behind me and you get that light coming in over. It helps just kind of, you know, illuminate your fabric. <clears throat> and so that's another tip I've got. I'm trying to think of what else. You, you can you can do specialty stitches and things on 40 count and you can do over one on 40 count. I did on this Louisa sampler and I think everything just looks pretty when it's smaller. And I'd much rather stitch on 40 count than stitch on over one on any count. I don't like stitching over one. You, I do use the sewing method when I stitch on 40 count, which means I sew all from the top. I do have a video in, on my channel about how to stitch using the sewing method. It helps you stitch faster, and so I don't have any problem with that. Uh, if you're finding that you feel like, oh, I can't really see the holes, because the threads obviously are going to be closer together maybe than what you're used to, you can try putting it in a hoop or a Q-snap and really tighten it up and kind of open those holes up, or you can give it a good iron to work on it first. I guess if you haven't stitched on 40 count before, you may consider starting with a smaller project to just see how you like it rather than jump into a full-blown huge project. You know, if you get, to, but I mean, if you're one of those people that you're like, no, I'm sticking to it and I'm getting it done, you totally can. I'm not saying you can't do it. If you, if you want to, you can do it. But you may want to give it a try. Just, you know, put a few stitches in and see kind of how it's going for you. But those, those I guess are my main tips for stitching on 40 count. Um, okay, I think that's, those are all the questions I'm gonna to answer today. Market is coming up. I leave a week from Thursday. Today is, today's Wednesday. And so I have a whole list of things I need to get done, but I'm checking them off one by one, just one at a time. And it's, like I said, it's going pretty great. I did get in the Hands Across the Sea pre-order that I put in. And so I've got all of her reproduction sampler charts. I feel like I'm ugh, kind of sitting weird. I've got all her, her reproduction sampler charts and they're great. And I have the new ones and they're great. I cannot send the new ones yet. They, I have to hold them until after market. And so you had to have a pre-order in with me for me to, to put you down for one and have one on hold for you. But I, I have extras and I will be probably picking up more at market. And, and so those are really the only, the, the only pre-orders I'm taking. Now I'm making pre-orders with shops. I'm pre-ordering from the Primitive Hair I'm pre-ordering from, uh, I'm, I'm gonna put in a pre-order with Teresa Kogut. I've already got my With Thy Needle and Thread pre-order in. Um, I can't remember. Oh, I've got a big pre-order in with um, Picture This Plus, so I'll have her new linen colors and Ada colors. Um, and so there are things that I just know I'm gonna be able to get. 
but it's really tricky for me to get out of my booth on Saturday at all because that's a really busy day and I will have um, my friend Sue, Susie Reno there to help me. So I may get out. It just depends on how busy it is. I'm not open for business on Friday. Some shops, um, some designers will do like an open house on Friday and do like early sales. And I just don't, I don't plan on it because if I need the time to <laughs> to finish packing charts or if I want to go out to dinner or if, especially now that I have fibromyalgia, if I'm tired, I just didn't want to overextend myself. So I'm not going to be open, but I may do some shopping then on Friday night for my store. And so hopefully I'll get things. But I didn't I didn't want to take pre-orders except for the, the hands across the sea stuff, which, which you can see them right, right there. Because she offered to, to ship them for free from England so she wouldn't have to carry them to the show. And so I got four big boxes of charts the other day. Oh, and I'm carrying her cards now. You can buy her. Her greeting cards are up for sale on my site right now. You can buy them as singles. And then I have packs of eight where you get one of, of all eight that I have. And they're really cool because it's they've got a nice picture on the front of one of her reproduction samplers and then on the back of the card it's got a full color chart of a motif from that sampler so they make really good gifts but I didn't want to take pre-orders otherwise because I didn't want people to be you know like disappointed if they had to wait um, I know there are there are shops that are taking pre-orders and I you know I certainly encourage you to do business with anybody for sure but I just didn't want to have the stress of like you know, trying to chase down every single little chart that people wanted to pre-order. I'm getting a lot. And I will be posting stuff on Tuesday when I get back from market. I get back Monday night. Um, I also am going to pick up Dovo scissors at the market. I've, that was one of my things. I kind of have a little list of things I want to make sure to add to my site this year. And John Allison, who's the rep for Dovo scissors, is going to be there. I don't think he sells scissors at the show, you know, like where I can get scissors and take them back with me I think he you place orders with him and he has samples and so um I I love Dovo scissors I have them everywhere I used to care I these are like probably 12 years old and they're just great 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 scissors they're not cheap but they're worth every penny because they just they have tiny little tips and they meet so nicely and they're made with that good German um, steel and they just I just I love Dovo's all right, um, so <laughs> last time that I was with you, I announced a, a salt box stitcher sale and that went great. I don't know what I was thinking. I thought, oh, well, we'll have a little sale. Carol can participate. It'll be really nice, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I had 400 orders <laughs> come in <laughs> over a couple of days. I thought it was just gonna be, I was like, oh, I have eight of this, that's enough. I have two of this, that's enough. You know, I'll just probably sell a few things because people are waiting for market. People went bananas. And so I had to just add inventory that I didn't have because I didn't want people to be disappointed that they missed out because things sold out within two hours. A lot of it was sold out. So I just kept adding and adding and adding inventory. And then that Monday, I called and, and emailed my distributors and cleaned them out of everything that they had of these charts that I needed. And then I had to start going to the designers directly. And that has taken a little bit longer. I'm only waiting now for um, the With Thy Needle and Thread package, which she sent on Monday. And so that should be here, I'm hoping tomorrow. And I've got like 100 orders left from that sale that I've been waiting for those charts. So thank you for making that sale um, successful. I was not counting on it. I will be more prepared for that next time, I feel. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's really any other news. Zero, we got any other news? Cats are as lazy as ever. I'm getting a lot of help in, you know, getting ready for market. Grandma's doing a great job helping me pack orders and, you know, getting getting emails sent out to customers. Grandma's starting to now answer some of my emails, which is really great. And he's, he's learning to do a really good job. We have added a couple of giant file cabinets to make um, packing orders easier for him and we're reorganizing things like hand dyed linens and so it'll be much easier for him to just kind of take over he's working on taking over the whole um, processing of orders on my site which is great my charts will be available after market as well I'm not selling them before market and they will be available as downloads I know that a lot of you who are live in other countries that really appreciate being able to download um, those charts because it's so expensive to ship. Gosh, is it expensive to ship. And so I hope that that helps you out. 
Um, do know that if you buy a download from my website, that you have 30 days to like use the link and click on the link and, and print, get that printed out or you know download it to your to your computer. I do get panicked emails from people who say, "Oh my gosh, you know, I ordered this, but I forgot. You know, I, I never went, and now I can't access it." And I don't worry. I don't make you pay again. I just I can send you a file, but just be aware that that's how that goes. Otherwise, you know, just continue to wish me well. I can feel you guys all out there pulling for me, and some of you have been so kind to send notes or gifts or um, just letters of encouragement, and I so appreciate that. Things are going great. We're gonna get through market. I'm I'm now past the um, panicky, like, oh my lord, what am I doing stage into the um, this is totally gonna happen stage. And I'm making plans of other things to take that are fun. I always like to fill my booth with just candy stitchy candy. So I'm going to be taking like all my rusty bells. I'm going to be taking some of my hand dyed fabric. Um, I got, I'm taking a bunch of like my old sampler books that I, you know, collect and sell the out of print things. Um, I just, I have just lots of cool stuff that I'm taking. And so I think people will like it. I of course will take pictures of my booth and I will be filming at the show. So my question for you this time, if you want to leave it in the comments is, at market, who would you like to me to interview? I did interviews last year, and I that's one of my most popular videos ever was the interviews with some of the designers at market. And I think it's fun for you guys to see them and hear them and kind of just get to know them a little bit, their personalities. So let me know who in particular you would like to see. I'm probably not going to answer every comment on this video. I will give it, I'll do the little heart thing so you know that I read it, but I just really don't have time to respond to every comment that I like, that I, I usually do. Uh, I will tell you there are a number of designers who are reluctant to appear on camera. They're a little bit shy. Um, Brenda Gervais, I know you would all love to see her and she's so lovely, but she's very camera shy. And so I will see if again this year, if she'll let me do some filming in her booth, but I, I don't think she'll, you know, be too keen on being filmed and that's totally fine. I don't want to like make somebody uncomfortable. I'm trying to think if there's anybody else. Oh, um, Isabel from Primitive Hair is also very camera shy. And I did film in her booth last year too. And she always has, I think her booth is always my favorite one. Um, and so some of the people that I'll do this year will probably be the same as last year. I'd like to do Barb and Alma again from Blackbird Designs. I might do, um, you know, Terry and Tina from Shepherd's Bush might be kind of cool. Um, Teresa Coke I really like, um, Paulette at Plum Street, uh, Beth over at Heartstring Samplery. I got to go figure out what all these people are releasing because people are like, oh my gosh, have you seen the new blah, blah, blah yet? And no, I haven't because I've just been working. <laughs> and so I'll get there. But I thank you for your support and I thank you for your kindness. And I hope that you guys have a good rest of the week. I will be working now. I mean, I, I have been working every day for the last however many weeks and I, I'm glad that the end is in sight. As soon as, you know, that last box is loaded into my faithful rogue and I close the lid and I back out of the driveway, as soon as I do that, I'm like, Whew. like, it's just like, okay, I got this. I got this. And then it's easy. Like I, I could do market standing on my head. It's easy. The hard part really is the prep because it's just a lot of bits and pieces of things to get ready. And it's a lot of stitching to do too. So I hope you guys have a great weekend week, rest of the week. I hope you had, I have, hope you have good days, whatever days they are. And I will check in again real soon. Thanks. Bye. Sing on. Hello. Okay. Hey, I didn't want to say goodbye to you yet because I just, I had a doctor's appointment. Now I'm back and I got something in the mail I wanted to show to you. Um, I, I had talked a couple videos ago, I think about like what I'm going to be handing out with, I always like to give a little gift with an order. I just think it's fun when you get a little something extra. And for almost, you know, I guess since last June, I've been handing out a skein of anchor floss. And I've done that for a while and it's fine. A lot of times though, the packages that I send out need to be flat and of course that adds bulk. So I was trying to think like, what can I send that would be flat but still kind of have value, be something that you could use? Man, I had this great idea. A, a number of years ago, I don't know, maybe like eight years ago, I found this person on Etsy who did drawings. Hi, Zero. And he, um, I really liked his style. He did pencil drawings. Maybe it was a lady. I don't know. I don't remember who this person is and I'm not even sure if they're still on Etsy because this was quite a while ago. And so I explained to this person the idea of Jenny Bean, you know, being a sampler stitcher. And that person, I paid, I paid that person to create 
kind of a Jenny Bean logo for me that I used a couple of times, you know, like I used it on my website and I used it with the Jenny Bean Friendship Sampler. And I still have this drawing, this original drawing that this person did. And so I thought, you know what, I'm gonna make note cards. So um, I contacted Vistaprint and I ordered um, note cards. And so with every order, you're going to get a free Jenny Bean note card. And I, so this is what they look like. They just came and it's this uh, Jenny Bean stitching a sampler, which I think is lovely. You can see there at the bottom, it says JB for Jenny Bean. And I think she's very pretty. I didn't really tell this person. I just was like, here's kind of what it needs, you know, she needs to be stitching. And they just created this and it's amazing. I'll have to see if I can find the original pencil drawing, but this, so there it is. And it's got just a touch of blushiness to it. And then on the back, it's just a, a single, you know, kind of card stocky card. And then on the back, it says, tell me ye knowing and discerning few where I may find a friend both firm and true with my website at the bottom. But you can just write a note to a friend, like a thank you card or a birthday card or a get well card or whatever on these little note cards. And so you're going to start, you know, if you place orders with me starting today, you'll be getting one of these cards with every order, which I, I hope is kind of fun. I think it's kind of fun. I thought it was a good idea and something you might not find other places. I also... Um, before my appointment, I forgot I was going to tell you guys a funny story, which is that um, my husband gets home really late on Tuesday nights because he has class, like really late, like 10 o'clock, super late. And he came home last night and it was late and I was tired. I'm really tired this week. I'm so tired. And um, he was, we kind of met in the kitchen when he came home and I would just sat down on a stool and I was kind of telling him about my day and just kind of, you know, kind of not. I wasn't 100% paying attention. I sensed that he was making some food for himself. And there was, I thought he was making sandwiches. And I had I had just bought some bread at Breadsmith. And, you know, he was kind of in and out of the fridge and stuff while I was talking. So I just was kind of half paying attention to him. And um, he grabbed his, he picked his plate up and started to walk away. And I said, oh, hey, just so you know, um, that's rosemary bread. So it's going to have a little bit of a rosemary flavor, just so you're not surprised. And he goes, did you just watch me make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? <laughs> so he made, he made peanut butter and jelly sandwiches on rosemary bread. That's what happens when you're not paying attention. Somebody, there's a catastrophe. I think he ate them. I haven't heard how they were. I'm sure it was a flavored delight. But um, that's all. I just wanted to share those cards with you guys. So now I really will see you later. Bye.